Well, what got me really interested in filmmaking was whenever I was younger, um, I would make these little videos with me and my friends. We would be using Windows Movie Maker on those old computers. And I always felt like that I could be really good at it and I had a gift for it. So I kept doing it and kept messing around with it and really enjoyed it. And then, well, you know, I lived in a very small town, you know, it wasn't like California, it wasn't in uh, LA or anything like that. And I just decided, well, how am I going to get into this whole field, right? And then I started getting really interested in, for the lack of a better word, the, the conspiracy community, the UFO community, spiritual community. Then I started my show, Raised by Giants, um, which is a podcast and a YouTube channel. And then I was like, and I started out with spirituality, right? And I was like, well, I can't really make movies and films that way, but I can put something out that people can find me and people can watch and listen to. And I would interview people. I had, uh, when I first started, it was just, a bunch of my friends that I knew personally that I interviewed and then I had to do a little bit of editing with those shows right because there's a video platform so then it kind of came back to me and then I was like okay well I'll make the the intros for all of my videos I'll make the outros I'll put you know pictures and stuff in the middle of the interview and that kind of, uh, I really enjoy doing that. That's one of my favorite parts of doing my show is the editing aspects and putting together the promotional material of the show. And then Jay Widener, uh, I interviewed Jay Widener a couple of times on my show and I always loved his content, always looked up to him and I saw him as a very honorable individual and uh, I had him on a couple of times and I'd watched his film, uh, Kubrick's Odyssey, a couple of times. So I brought him on to talk about that, the, uh, the, the faking of the landing and the shining. And then I brought him on a, uh, a third time. Yeah, I really didn't realize how deep the rabbit hole went on all this stuff. And, uh, you know, through watching your documentaries and others' theories on Kubrick's work, you know, we'd be here for hours just talking about the hundreds, if not thousands of subliminal messages in his films. And I developed a new theory around The Shining. I watched The Shining several times over and over and over again and like a lot of theories surrounding the, sign, uh, the Shining, just like the JFK assassination. You know, there's so many theories around The Shining. And I thought that The Shining was a very boring film. Now I admired Stanley Kubrick's filming of, of it, but it was just very boring to me. I didn't understand what was going on. Like many people still don't understand the film. All of these years later, there's still theories and ideas uh, that are going on surrounding the film. And I watched it like every day for probably like a month at least because I was preparing to bring Jay on my show so that we could talk about it. And then the day, and I didn't find anything new, right? Until the very last day before I was going to interview him, I found the most mind blowing thing within The Shining, and I presented that to Jay, and I was like, Jay, this is unbelievable. I think I just discovered something that explains the entire movie. And he was like, yeah, I think you did. And, I, and then a couple of months go by, we do the show, and then I contact him again, and I was like, hey, we need to do a documentary about this. We really need to do this, because this is something that is, uh, it's a new theory. There hasn't been too many new theories around The Shining here uh, recently and uh, he was like yeah let's do it and then we we're like oh well how about let's do another film before we do the shining film because the, the shining film was going to take uh, a lot of time and a lot of effort we need to uh, put something out quick and i had already interviewed him about this theory that he has about jfk so I already was familiar with what he was talking about in, uh, with this theory surrounding the JFK assassination. And he was like, okay, well, let's just make a film about that. 
And I was like, perfect. Let's do this because this is going to be the, um, this is a mind blowing interpretation of what happened to JFK and the JFK assassination. And he trusted me. You know, he said, how confident are you in your uh, editing abilities? And I said, very confident. And he was like, all right, come on. And I was like, Wow, that's uh, that's incredible. It's not very often that people give you a chance like that and that you can actually produce something that good, as good as uh, I did and that we did and that we put together. So I was uh, very grateful for that opportunity and him giving me that chance to uh, create something and uh, have a vision for it. So the reception of the film, I think, is going to really melt people's minds a lot because just like I was mentioning with The Shining, there's so many theories uh, surrounding The Shining, you know, that is speaking about the Holocaust, that is speaking about Native Americans, that um, it's about World War II. And just like with The Shining, this JFK documentary is different. It's like, unlike anything that anyone's ever heard before because there's been so many theories surrounding the JFK assassination that it's muddied the waters, right? I mean, the JFK assassination was the original conspiracy theory. And that's what we're going back to. We're going back to the very beginning of the conspiracy community. That's really where all of this conspiracy culture got put into the zeitgeist of uh, the consciousness of really everybody on the planet. And this movie is really going to challenge a lot of people's preconceived thoughts and ideas surrounding the JFK assassination. But I believe when people see it and they see what we are presenting to them and showing them the evidence of what's happening, they are going to be fighting within themselves. Because we've been told this entire time that it was the CIA. And that's everyone's go-to thing with the uh, JFK assassination. They're like, oh, it was the CIA. The CIA did it. Absolutely, 100% the CIA. You know, or it's the government theorists that take the official Warren Commission line that a lone gunman, Lee Harvey Oswald, alone killed the president of the United States, uh, JFK. And it's either one of those two things, or it's the grassy knoll shooter, or it's the, uh, the driver of the limousine, or that there's multiple shooters. And in this film, it... I'm trying to be careful here because I'm not trying to give too much away. It's none of that. And it's really going to challenge people's thoughts and beliefs and what they think that they knew about the JFK assassination. 